Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Valkyria Chronicles. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as I level up some people and uh, spend my experience, but more importantly, uh, I will want my shock troopers and my scouts to be up there. But more importantly, we come out of a, uh, a battle. Uh, last episode we fought in the desert, and uh, it was pretty cool. There's potential going on in here. Why? Oh, it's telling me the potentials of people. Sure. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure. No, you're, I'm, you're just... You don't do that again, please. So we're just leveling these up. I might just stick to... Uh, I don't want to hear you ever again. Ever. Yeah. This order raises one ally's anti-personnel attack power. Oh, that's what purse is for. It's a new order that we got. I like it. And now we'll be able to level my snipers up. Go for it. Nope. Level up is nice. Shut, shut. Yep. Spending all that experience. So we need to just go around the, uh, the, what is it called? The headquarters, I think. Let's go to squad barracks. See if anything happens. Uh, nobody even says hi to me. No, because this place doesn't have uh, anybody. It's the, uh, Command room with Commander Verrett. Sergeant? Hello, Wilkin. Com Captain. Here to fine-tune your squad. Oh, and there have been some new recruits. There have been Sherry over here. Uh, and, uh, that's that. We got a couple of snipers. That's actually quite good. I think snipers are a little bit too limited, though. Let's see, you have, uh... Frail body, that's not... Yeah, Emily, you're a hired. Marina, pollen allergy is not nasty. Night vision is kind of good. I'll go with those two. Uh, no, no, not that. Let's see. So, country bred lancer, lancer hater, camp defender, sadist, challenge lover, born leader, pessimist and metalhead. I enjoyed my time with you. If I can be of help in the future, do ask. I will. I will. Uh, and also, we don't need these many, I suppose. Let's see. Metal allergy is a bit of a problem. Defense is men and women, which is pretty good. Uh, metal bread. Eichmomorph morph. What's that? Deathly afraid of pointed objects. No, you're gone. Okay, great. Later. Sorry. Call me if you need me. Absolutely. And let's get our two new snipers. I'm Emil Baylor. I'm just happy to be here, Mr. Gunther, sir. Just Mr. Gunther. Marina Wolfstan, at your command. Wolfstan is quite a name. It is quite a name. So there it is. We have those two, and we have all of our squad. Come back anytime you need to change your lineup. Yes, we can stop with the formalities. Always doing the thing with the head, uh, the forehead thingy. So R and D. Yeah, my favorite. Where we can spend our doctorates. Welcome, bro. I'm stoked you're here, man. Let's develop weapons. Is it this time? Oh, R&D top? No. What's that for? Right. It just goes back. Okay. Uh, do we have access to new things? We do not have access to new things. We do. That's costly. Accuracy. Aim is C still. Okay. Let's not bother with that for right now. Uh, these are nice. Aim is still the same. Okay. And they have some of these, but we can't go up on any of those. This is just good, so I'll go up on that. Aim is still the same, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. The grenades are the same. Uniforms, very much needed. Here you go, bro. Okay, pretty straightforward upgrade path on the uniforms. All set for you. Thank you. And let's go up on the accuracy or accurate. It says accuracy boost. It's done. This one's perfect, bro. Which is weird, because it isn't. It just actually increases the uh, the damage rather than the aim. Right? Am I, I'm not wrong on that. Am I wrong on that? I might be wrong on that. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, so let's see. I might want... Yeah, I definitely want this. Here you go, bro. All done. And then... The, no, no, that's not what I want either. This is how I do. So... That's pretty good, but I'm not going to rely too much on it for right now. And uh, only when I get two things 
The thing is, I don't know if I get more things because I'm upgrading, because it, it's looking like that's the case. It's looking like we get the next level because we're upgrading, so yeah. Although, wait, we haven't bought any of these? No, we have, yeah. What do we have? Spare thread, drive system, accuracy increase. Absolutely. All set for you, bro. And that requires a place. Periscope goes in right there. And I guess that's that. Okay. It's pretty good, which means I will go up on machine. Uh, no, wait, it's not machine guns. All lances. All set for you, bro. Oh. It's done. It's available. It's right there. I just didn't see it before because all set for you, bro. It's done. Because I didn't upgrade. That's pretty straightforward. Will we get are we capable of upgrading everything though? Cuz I think so. Nah, I'll save the money. I'm sorry, the dock roots. We know what they are. Yes, back to Come back again soon, bro. To the other place. I mean it, man. Yeah, don't worry. I don't know where the other dude was though. He didn't say anything. So, Castle Front, St Front Street, absolutely. Hey, dropping by to read the writing on the wall? That's a good man. I wanted to pay things as well. Oh, and how about the new rising star of Squad 7, huh? I've heard some wild stories. You must be proud. I couldn't help but snipe him with a pop interview. You'll have to read it once I get it all drafted up. Mm, it's not here that we buy things, I don't think. Lucky 7's cut off supply bays. That's not how... That is how, yeah. I was gonna say that's not how you possess... It is, it is definitely how it, you pos make a possessive seven. Uh, cut off supply base. He oh, no, that's not possessive, that is a HES. Which is rarely abbreviated as an apostrophe S. The militia's third regiment, partner in our ongoing war correspondence, was successful in seizing the Empire's supply base in the Cloden Wildwood, despite interference from Empire Ace General Raddy Jaeger. This new victory coming on the heels of their vassal win last month that pushed the invasion back to central Gallia has all of uh, Randgris singing their praise. Losing the Colden Bays was no doubt a severe blow to the Imperial force looking to regain some of that lost ground, which is good news to Galleon Galleons everywhere. It's anyone's guess where the militia will crop up next, but their efforts so far make one thing clear. These men and women mean business. Militia issues draft notices. The government issued a second wave of drafts among Galleon for the militia on the 8th. Expected since the Empire's formal declaration of war last month, this w draft was likely made inevitable by the recent series of losses in the East and North. The draft will target males aged 30 to 45, selected based on qualifications and their impact. 30 to 45? Was that, is that actually based on the history? Is that how, did, did things happen like this? Or is it just, uh, just in this game? Because it could be just in this game, of course. Uh, on Impact's Galleys normal function, the militia is also accepting volunteers from those not included in the second draft, but many worry about the economic strain that further loses to the commerce and industry sector may... The further losses to the commerce and industry sector may impose. The industry sector, very important industry sector. Da, 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 da. I've got new material. Although in, in early 20th century, it actually makes sense to, to call it that, because it's... It's not like, you know, it's the pharmaceutical industry, is it? Or could it, could it, maybe it is the, uh, the, 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 la la lactic, lactic products? You know, milking. That's an industry, too. And that's where we are going to spend our doctorates. That piece is on Welkin and Alicia. A taste of home. <laughs> Thanks a million. Come back and see the writing on the wall again soon. I'll be waiting for you. See you later. And there's the war cemetery with the old man who might have a thing for me. Hello again, son. I mean, he might have something for me. He doesn't have a thing for me. Only, uh, unless he does, in which case. It's weird that he's calling me son. I'm sorry. But Bye. 
Yeah. He doesn't have anything. So, we have a new episode has been added. A new report has been added. The personnel tab has been updated. So what is a report? Report. A taste of home. That is what that is. Thank you. Um, so a new chapter... Was it a new chapter? New episode. It was a new episode. Oh, it's because there's this new episode in the report. Oh, Umoi! Umoi? Is it Umoi or Umai? Yeah, he's just... He's very... Mm, he, he, he likes that. Let's see what it is. An unexpected visit, quote-unquote. Wait, it's the name of the chapter. And done. That takes care of the report. Hmm? Who's there? No knocking. No. It's the pig. Pigs don't like. Don't like. Don't knock. Hans? Did you come here all by yourself? Boy, you sure are smart. Hey, stop tugging, Hans. What's up? Is there something this way? Okay, okay, I get it. Lead the way. And you can stop biting my boots already. You went and got welcome for me? Nice going, Hans. Thanks. I just got led around base by a pig. Any idea what he wants with me, Alicia? Oh no, I was the one who wanted to see you. Are you hungry, Walken? Hungry? Well, yeah, actually. Really? Oh, good. I whipped a little something up for you. Come see. What? Back in the kitchen? Whoa. Yeah, we're, we're, oh, whipping something up can mean not necessarily, you know, food. Can mean anything, really. So it makes sense that he would be surprised about the kitchen. Wait, you make it... Oh, the cliffhangers. T for two and a half. Aye, he's a full p piggy. Whatever. Wow. Oh, that... I... I've never seen so much bread in one place. You baked all this yourself, Alicia? Mm-hmm. It's been a while since I made anything. I was worried I might be getting a bit rusty. But the oven was free, so I helped myself. Mm, it smells great. Okay, here goes. Really? Yeah. That's what I said. I've never eaten bread this good. Moishi. It's really impressive. Um. Um. It must be something like bread. Um. Welkin, you look like a chipmunk. Uh, you know how chipmunks and hamsters stuff their little cheeks full of food like that? I finally understand why. Because they eat uh, eat her bread. What? I can't accept comedy. I can't accept comic relief. Relief. I'll pick on your lines. Oh, I'm so full. That was great, huh, Hans? Especially eating a bunch of bread. Bread is super filling. Bread is like, oh, well, I guess it depends on the bread, I suppose. But especially if it's like the little, um, the one that has the, uh, uh, yeah, bread is different all around the world. I don't believe I've ever had any Japanese style bread, which that one was, because that was that's a hard, that looks like a hard corn bread. Or is it called a hard corn bread? Here in Europe, we have like that shape of bread usually is done with corn flour, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's cooked in the oven in the oven up until the point where there's a hard crust around. So the interior, if it's done well. It's uh, it's not fluffy, and it, it's it's a specific kind of bread. It's sort of hard bread, um, and it's not fluffy at all, which is what happens when you cook uh, wheat flour bread, e even if you cook it into a hard crust, which is never as hard as cornbread. So that looked that looked to me like it was a lot more flour than than cornbread, and then corn flour. I should say a lot more wheat flour than corn flour. Um, and I yeah I just. I suppose you can make bread like that here in Europe, but it's just not very traditional. At least, as far as I know, anyway. 
But this is probably like Germany or nor no, actually we know this is the Northern Europe, so I don't know anything about Northern European bread. So do, do tell me if you're from there or from anywhere, really. I'd love to hear about your bread. Right. I can't believe you put it all away. It was a little scary watching you two eat. Still, I'm glad you liked it. It feels good to see people enjoying my bread. It felt good eating it. Thanks for baking it all. You're welcome. Oh, Welkin, uh, you have some... There's just a little crumb. There we go. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> so, uh, you said you worked at a bakery before the war started? Yeah. I was a live-in apprentice under the Meister running the shop. Once things settle down, I plan on taking the national exams and opening up my own bakery. Wow. Need to be licensed to run a bakery? That sounds pretty tough. It's been my dream since I was a little girl. It's what I enjoy doing the most. I love imagining entire families eating the bread I make together. A loving husband, maybe, and cute little kids waiting for their mom to get home. While eating the bread, and the mom on her way back home also eating the bread. She comes in with a big basket of my bread, oh, no. and the kids all cheer and embrace her. I guessed the wrong storyline. Okay. <laughs> oh, and what if my bread brings the husband and wife closer together? They can be married again. She could say, oh, honey, you have a crumb in your beard, and then she'd... <laughs> uh... Listen to me. <laughs> That's... Just like what happened here a minute ago, Welkin, but I, am. Um... No, it was not. Are... are you alright, Alicia? Also, are you sure you don't want to become a writer? Because that's not... you... you... yeah, smut fiction is a, is a thing. Huh? Fiction, I mean. I, I'm fine. Anyway, I'll keep baking it if you keep eating it. It's a deal. And thanks again. They started me in the military. Eat your own, cook your own, <laughs> cook your own bread, though, no, because the kitchen is just there. Lovely. Let's go. Let's get on with it. That was, a, that, mind you, that was a journalistic piece. That's what we got. Oh, Morrowind. Huh? What's this supposed to be anyway? It's a big crab shell. What a weird place for something like this. There you all are. Hey there, Faldio. I didn't know you were out here, too. I'm an archaeology major, remember? I was ordered to observe the ruins' interior. Nerd. The shape of it really is unusual. I've never seen anything like it. Also, it's not a ruin. Because it's still standing up. One of the first things that happens to buildings when they uh, get abandoned is the roof collapses. Yeah. That's just how it is. I suppose it depends on the style of roof, and but in, in stuff like this, it would definitely that's that's how it works. I feel like I've seen it before somewhere. Yeah, Morrowind. Hmm. Where could it have been? This building was supposedly erected millennia ago by the Valkyr themselves. So they actually existed then. Yes, the Valkyr make a sudden appearance in European history thousands of years ago. Records say they brought with them incredibly advanced technology and divine might. Then one day, their history just ends. The Bakura just disappeared. I always thought they were just a myth. That's it. I remember now. Oh, that's how he solved the issue. He said the word records. I'm not even kidding right now. It's important to, I, I guess, the Valkyrs there... Uh, being established as a mythological figure, where I suppose, you know, folklore wise, like, oh, the dragons really exist. Oh, did they? Oh, yes, they did. They came from above and burned everything and then they disappeared. Something like that. But it's Valkyrs. I don't know what they are. So maybe a race of people? Maybe a style of creature? I mean, they built this thing, so it makes sense that it would be a race of people. Um, but the only. He just says the records show. Which is flimsy, but at least he, that's what he means by that. He wasn't just... He wasn't gonna go on about what this is. He's gonna go on about what the Valkyrs were, so, yeah. Remember what, Welkin? 
What are you shouting about? The Dread Nautilus. This structure looks just like a Dread Nautilus. A Dread Nautilus? What's that? You don't know? They're marine cephalopods. They live inside pointy spiral shells. Didn't I tell you there was a crab? Although a, a crab is an a cephalopod. Is it a cephalopod? It is, isn't it? No, it's a pod, but it's I don't know if it's cephalopod. Maybe. And these ruins look just like that shell. I wonder if there's some connection there. Yeah, so I'm referencing Morrowind there. In Morrowind, there's a building that looks very much like this one. And it's basically the shell of an, a crab that died and they built under it, underneath it. Welkin, you can be such a... Nerd? Hmm? What's up? Nothing. Forget it. The implication there... I, in Japanese, it works a little bit better than the lines just now. At least usually when... When a woman... So this is in... in I don't actually know if it's in Japanese or if it's like an anime trope or whatever. When a woman gets disappointed with a man, well, a girl, I guess, because it's an anime, so it's they're all 14 years old. Um, when a girl gets disappointed with a boy, b when they're not in a relationship, that's usually taken, and especially the obliviousness of the boy, it's usually taken as a, a sort of a, a preamble to, or an, a hint that she's into him, a preamble to romance, whatever. Um... And that's why he said, what's up? That, And she says nothing, forget it, because she's embarrassed, or I guess she doesn't want to... It's not that she's embarrassed, but she doesn't want to say that. The, he, his what's up doesn't actually sound very... Why, why would he say it? She was like, you can be such a... And be like, such a what? What What did I... But I don't know. Right, let's take a look inside then. We may find some clue to why the Empire is out here. It bears noting that I am not used to listening to or to watching anime in English or in Portuguese for that matter. Um, it's all subbed, so it, it, a lot of the stuff, a lot of this stuff is very weird to me. But if I have, if I listen, if I watched anime in English, I suppose it wouldn't be weird to me. I would just see weird things happening in English. But no, I see them happening in Japanese, and I'm like, oh, that's just how Japanese works, I guess, or Japanese people think, or whatever. Let's go into the crash. I want you to come help Faldio and me look around inside. Largo, Rosie, and Isara, you stay here. Be on the lookout for movement in the area. All right, sir. Please be careful. Onichan, sir. <laughs> are we going? Go uh, are we going to go into it? Are we going to have battles in there? Tell me, Silvaria. Do these walls offer an answer to our search? Capital H. Oh, sorry. Capital O. Search. I pray. Where sleeps the ancient power? What do you read, child? Ellipses only have three dots, she says. Valkov. The Holy Lance. Scorcher of the vast earth. A sleep eternal in the bosom of Rand Reeves. Made pillar of its keeper's keep, kept thereby for eon without end. Then it's true. The sacred lance lies buried within Ron Grease's walls. But your grace, how do you intend to control the lance once it is found? <laughs> Worry not. A beast fit to bear that burden will soon be at our disposal. I wonder if you say if he's talking about himself in the majestic the plural majestic plural is that how he goes like ah oh, the king thou whatever i know anyway with this our dream is made hard fact our crown shadow will extend to all of europa chapter 7 the battle at barius <laughs> We have a long way to go for the battle because it's over on the uh, chapter four or episode four a. A history unfolds. It continues unfolding. It's been unfolding since the first chapter. Whoa! I don't know what I expected, but it really wasn't this. Amazing, isn't it? I was surprised when I first came here too. 
There aren't any windows or skylights in here, but it's still so light. The ruins are made of stone with a high ragnite concentration. It lights itself. It's uncanny. Look at this. Something's written on the wall here. It's in Old Northern script. Old Northern? They didn't, they didn't change the Northern to be a different term? <laughs> it was the dominant writing system in Europa. You still see it on a lot of old monuments. Do you know how to read it, Baldio? Yeah, we just covered it this last year. Let's take a look. It's more or less a recounting of the Darksen Calamity as the history books tell it. The Darksons unlocked some secret property of Ragnite and tried to conquer the continent. A hundred cities raised its fell light, ten hundred thousand men and beast therewith. It says this area used to be one of the cities lost in that purge as well. It, it's, it's, um... So I don't I don't know if uh, I don't remember her name though uh, that general from uh, from the galleon or the from the evil ones um, she I thought she might have been reading something he definitely was reading something over here uh, and did you notice how the way he said things are uh, was weird the reason or at least for the most part the reason why old stuff that you're reading or translating or anything is weird is because the lang uh, the is because the words or the phrasing in the original language is is uh, very detached from our own cultural traditions and just the way we speak um to read it, it, it's it, it's usually a lot more it's it's what i mean is when you read old stuff even in things like latin even yeah, like even even Latin, for example, you try you look look at a sentence in Latin for the first time, you're not gonna say it like that. You're not gonna read. Oh, it says that they're with and here to for our something or other. Um, you're just gonna say this means that you know they they were afraid of this or they destroyed that or whatever. Um, because formulating a word or a sentence that conveys the meaning of the original in your own language on the fly, especially for a Oh, we, we covered it this last year in school. Uh, kind of archaeologist, it's, yeah, that's not how it works, but I appreciate the effort. So they did use Ragnite. It was in the middle of that destruction that the Valkyrer suddenly came into the picture. Supposedly they rose to face the Darksons, armed with sacred lances, blue with flame. That became the War of the Valkyrer. I had a picture book about that as a girl. But it's fiction, right? Like a fairy tale. Ruins like these dot the European map. Traces of the culture that once ruled the continent. The majority of the anthropological community now agrees that the Valkyrer did exist. It's a historian community. Wow. This is so educational. <laughs> The Valkyrie won and rose to power, while the Darksons were scattered across Europa. There are some who worship the Valkyrie as the saviors of Europa even today. Meanwhile, the Darksons got branded with the stigma of their past and were persecuted. With no land of their own, they had to work as itinerant laborers and ragnite miners. It's weird that he says this is so educational. When all of he, that he's saying is not out of... He's not saying the things that are written over there. As far as I can tell, anyway. He's just recounting what people know already. To, and and even... Uh, and uh, Alicia thought it was myth. But she must know this. This is probably common knowledge. It's probably the reason why people don't like the Darkson. He's like, oh, because the Valkyr didn't like you. And you fought against them. So screw you. You're not going to get my bread. Or something. Which is why there are so many darks and still working in the industrial sector today. Again with the industrial sector. You mean they're exploited? Is that what you mean? I never knew that. Come to think of it, Isara's dad was an engineer. No, I think he said something that I didn't catch. It's not that they were exploited. Is that something I didn't catch what he said? Anyway, that's enough history for today. Let's keep checking for Imperial tracks. 
It is funny. The industrial sector. <laughs> Oh boy, anyway, that's gonna be that for today, because we're out of time. So for right now, I'm Criddle RPG, and this has been Valkyria Chronicles. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.